Today's video is sponsored by Ridge. Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to the new Hummer EV pickup truck and welcome to an Electrify America charging station because we're gonna take this Hummer EV on a road trip down to New York. It's gonna be about 350 miles round trip which is going to exceed the range of this truck. It has a 329 mile range, pretty respectable given the fact that it is 9,000 pounds and it's pollen season out here. So it used to be white. Now it is essentially yellow. Maybe we will hose this down before we go. But I really enjoy driving this thing because it gets the craziest looks. Everybody kind of instantly wants to hate it, but then realizes it's electric and that it does really weird things like the crab walk and a three second sprint to 60 because the edition one has a thousand horsepower but here's the problem is that you are gonna have to deal with these and electrify america is very annoying so because i've got to go on this road trip tomorrow i gotta to leave really early in the morning i do not want to have to stop anywhere along the way to be late and i don't have the charging infrastructure at my house to actually put real juice in this thing if i just put it in the wall tap at 110 this would take forever so i've got to come to my local electrify america station electrify america America stations have been hit or miss for me. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, sometimes they work really slow, sometimes they won't even take my information to let me charge. But this one now, they have credit card swipers. This is massive because instead of relying on the nightmare near field communication between phone and charger and trying to tell the charger that I'm here, it's me, this is my account, please work, I'm plugged in. And it'll go back and forth and be like, no, you're not plugged in. I'm like, I am plugged in. This is the frustration. Right now it's working smoothly. We've got a 150 kilowatt charge speed. That's not incredibly fast, but it's good enough. Now, the last time we did an EV road trip, we were in a Chevy Bolt EUV, much smaller. And this can charge at a speed of up to 350 kilowatts. That's no small potatoes. That's actually really quick. That's on par with Tesla. All right, we've got 299 miles of range. It's about a 10 mile drive home, leaving us with about 100 miles extra to play with for the ride down tomorrow. That makes me feel a lot better. And you know what, if I had the charging infrastructure at my house, this wouldn't have had to happen, but it took about 38 minutes to get this charge and about $14, $15. So it's not outrageous, but uh, you know, it's just an extra step that I wouldn't really have to have ever thought about in a petrol car. Father's Day is fast approaching and Ridge has the perfect gift. It's time to get your dad out of that big bulky wallet and into a Ridge. Ridge is making it easy with one of their biggest sales of the year for Father's Day. And don't worry, the Ridge wallet can still hold up to 12 cards plus cash and you can get a matching key case that'll hold up to six keys. So find the best Father's Day gift using my link, ridge.com slash Tedward. And right now you can save up to 40% through June 15th. That's ridge.com slash Tedward. Good morning, we're 50 miles into our trip to New York in the Hummer EV, and so far, so good. I'm using Super Cruise, it has auto lane changed me to the left lane, and I am hanging on to a relatively slow speed because this thing is a brick and I'm afraid to deplete the range too, too quickly. We've got 229 miles of range left, we have 138 miles to go, so that's good. That dropped a little bit faster than I anticipated, but that's why we're hanging on to kind of a slow speed because EVs on the highway, this is not what they're good at, especially a giant EV like this. But 300 miles of range should do us just fine. Why you don't like that? Super Cruise canceled. A couple notes from this morning. Number one, that mirror is very difficult to adjust to a point where I feel really confident that I know what's going on around me. So I really encourage anyone driving one of these Hummers, always, always, always give an over the shoulder look. Do not, do not rely on that mirror specifically because it, like that car doesn't exist yet. There it is, okay. It was a bit chilly this morning. It was like 30 degrees, shockingly actually, and it turned on my heated steering wheel, my heated seat automatically. That's wonderful. What I don't like is that I have to give two clicks. So this is the heated seat button, and then it turns it into a cooled and ventilated seat. So I go click here, and then I've got to either click here or here for heated or cooled seats. Now, that's not a huge deal, but like, 
it, it is annoying that I've got to use two different buttons and two different clicks to get there. So it'd be cool if that was just like centralized or if that was a touch button, like a touch screen, that would be fine too, but it's not. I do like having the physical buttons, but sometimes it's just like, I'm already trying to decipher what's going on down here and then it changes. And then the other thing is that this windshield is filthy and they seemingly um, sent me the truck with no wiper fluid and there's no indication on my dashboard that tells me that it's out. Quick correction, this has perfectly topped off washer fluid. It sounds like the motor isn't even running. So that makes sense that there's no light that would indicate that there is no washer fluid. Kind of annoying because it's a very blunt windscreen, which means you pick up a ton of bugs. You'd think, well, don't worry, Tom. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the gas station and then you're gonna wipe it off with the nice squeegee guy, except that I'm not. I'm not going to a gas station because I'm in an electric car and they do not provide such services at EV chargers. So I'm gonna have to stop at a damn gas station so I can wipe the windscreen. It's no surprise that I'm hitting a wall of traffic here in Connecticut. That's just the way it is. It's rush hour, but in an electric vehicle, traffic is helpful for your range because when you slow things down, you're not pushing as much air you typically end up being much more efficient. Like an EV at 30 miles per hour is going to be a lot more range efficient than at 75 or 80. And it's just also kind of relaxing because instead of being in a Duramax diesel Alpha H1 Hummer, where I'm like fighting the transmission and jumping into that throttle, constantly putting massive load on an, a, 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 a gas guzzler of an engine. This EV is just super smooth. You know, it's not geared. I just, I just float along. It's quiet. I don't have any unnecessary vibrations. This is one of the odd times where I really love electric cars because electric cars and traffic are just relaxing, beautiful, carefree, and in my Honda, my little manual Civic Type R, it's a great car, it's fairly efficient at 30 miles per gallon, but once I get into traffic, that goes down, and I'm having to shift, I'm having to just slip that clutch on and off, and on and off, and on and off, and hoping, hoping that traffic is moving at a speed that accommodates a particular gear. It's frustrating when you're like going from first to second, first to second, ooh, we, we got a piece of third for like 10 seconds, and then you're bogging it down, and an electric, car it just doesn't matter because there's no moment i love this hyundai elantra n flashing a left lane hog that's beautiful stuff but in an electric car you're just always in the right gear ratio unless you're trying to go 150 miles an hour so you're just never worried it's just always easy i missed my turn but luckily the turning radius of this hummer is ridiculous so i can just do the really simplest u-turn ever and then find my way here into AI design. Oh no, it's not this one, it's the next one. <laughs> oh man, all right, let's see. Can I get in here? Is this gonna work? Yes, I think we're gonna be A-okay. Let's go say hi. So we've done 190 miles, we've got 114 miles of range left, which is fantastic because that means that we did better than the projections. So quite impressed so far. Let's go check out AI design and we'll go see what's up for the day. No losses, I don't do lipo. A few screws loose in the head, I'm a psycho. Promise you the bot, just as real as the bite though. Misunderstood, you could call me a typo. I shine hotter than the stars in the night though. Hate the who's who's, don't give me a tight though. Flip the that set, so I don't worry the price though. Got scratched like mine, no, leave it to the tribal. Ah! I ain't even trying to try though. I've wrapped up at AI Design after driving the Bronco and the S8 and checking out some of the great stuff that's in their fleet. I've got to charge up because I only had 100 miles of range left, which is actually pretty impressive that I was able to come here and still have 100 miles of range to play with. So I have found an Electrify America station here. There's a Chipotle. I can go get a little food and it's charging up. It's going to take about an hour to get to 80%. I don't even need 80%, but I would like 80%. So... I think this is pretty good. I have had no problems with this network lately. It's really refreshing to be able to come and plug in and know that I'm gonna get what I want. And what's even cooler is that it's charging faster than 150 kilowatts. So despite the fact that 
that charger says it's 150 kilowatts, I'm getting more than that. I'm actually getting uh, uh, 165 or so. So this should be charging pretty darn quick. I'm pretty psyched. The blue lights up front are actually pretty helpful because they indicate the charge level. So right now we're over halfway. We're about 60, 63%. So when I started, they were down about here, which is convenient because if you're standing somewhere else and you're like sitting in a restaurant waiting to see and you don't wanna look at your phone with the app, you can actually just look at the front of the Hummer and you can tell how charged it is. So right now we've done $40, yikes. This is not that cheap. We've got a little bit of time left before we've got to 80%, we'll be comfortably home with a reasonable amount of charge. But yeah, this is not gonna be free, guys. Electric charging does cost money. It's obviously cheaper than if this was some monster gas guzzling diesel, but but don't expect this to just be like, oh, electricity is free, I get to drive for free. No, you're still using a lot of energy in this Hummer. You've joined me back on the road. Charging concluded about $50. And yeah, that's not cheap. It's not, not super cheap to charge your giant battery on a Hummer. But also keep in mind that I'm not using like the Electrify America member pricing. That was just me as a guest putting my credit card in. But you know, that's how you might experience this. So that's the worst possible case scenario, essentially, unless the chargers don't work. And that is what I want to talk about. Can you use this Hummer EV as a daily driver, a road trip car, or even just like a, 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 a trans city thing where you're going New York to Boston, that kind of thing? I'm going to go with a yes. Honestly, this is so much more capable as a, a normal car than it looks. It looks ridiculous. It looks like it's on these giant off-road tires. It looks like it should be cumbersome and uncomfortable. But here I am on the Merritt Parkway using Super Cruise. It is winding through these streets like nothing. It's using its auto lane change to keep me moving around right-hand traffic. Anyone from Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, whatever, like they will respect the fact that this is driving itself hands-free. Okay, of course, the second I say that, it says this. You can't make this up. Okay, but for like a long time, it's a it's a small section of road that it doesn't have Super Cruise available. But the fact that it's running the Merit on Super Cruise is, is incredible. That is so cool. There's just no getting around the fact that like the electric charging network isn't ideal. And it's not impossible, it's usable. I have proven that on this trip. I've been able to charge. I've had no problems with the chargers that I've used. And that is super refreshing, especially from Electrify America. However, that doesn't mean that there will be chargers where you're going. I actually live in a bit of a charger desert. Now, it doesn't mean that I can't get anywhere, but I still have to drive a good like 15, 20 minutes to go and get to a fast charger. If you're going certain places, there may be situations where you're not gonna get those chargers. And you know, between major cities, between major waypoints, yeah, you'll probably be a-okay. And yes, you're just gonna have to get used to sitting around for 40 minutes every once in a while to make sure that you're juiced up for the next leg. But if you're buying a big truck, a big Hummer EV like this, chances are you're gonna do some off-roading. You're gonna go have some fun out in the wilderness, out on some like, you know, not so trampled trails, if you will. That might be a problem. That might actually limit you in a, in, a, in a situation where you don't have the ability to charge. Or let's say, you know, this is really hypothetical. Let's say you're out there and, you know, something goes wrong on your trail. You can't get back the other way. You've got to go around. You've got to do some crazy route. And maybe you didn't budget for that charge. I mean, that's just a fact of the electric car game. Yes. These can be planned for, this can be understood. At least you can have some backup plans and maybe some friends with other electric cars that could come out and charge you if you really needed to do that. But, you know, to me, what this Hummer exemplifies is the future of SUVs for GM. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I think that this is kind of a, you know, and they haven't said this to me. This is just what I assume this car is. I assume this Hummer EV is the precursor to Suburbans and Yukons and Tahoes. And I think I'm going to turn off Super Cruise during this because it, sure it's fine. I'm sure it will work, but my goodness, I just get nervous in construction zones with Super Cruise. <laughs> It'll always tell you like, Hey, you should, uh, you should have a heads up here. Um, anyway, 
I'm okay with that because I do think for most people's driving, most people's day to day, most people's even road trips up to, uh, you know, Vermont for a ski weekend or down to New York for, you know, a fancy dinner or a business trip, this is going to function for you. And having the functionality and efficiency of an electric vehicle is great. It's great. You know, we can talk about batteries and lithium mining till the cows come home. Um, but look, like I'm, I'm not here to be the environmentalist. I'm here to just tell you how the car is. So feel free. You can you can go off about what you love and hate about these cars all you want, and that and that's fine. That's that's exactly what we're in right now. We're in this big influx of new technology that is sort of not ready for prime time, but they're here. We're doing it. So I hope that the charging networks improve. I've got 157 miles to go home. I've got 235 miles of range and I don't have any worries. I, I know that I'm going to be okay. It did a really good job of predicting my range on the way down. It pretty much was dead on. And yeah, I, I, I like it. It's unnecessary, it's crazy, but it's fun. And I've talked to so many people. In fact, at that last charging station, I was approached by a couple of guys in a Lucid. And the Lucid guys worked for Lucid. Those guys were doing marketing at a charging station because it's obvious that they want people who are adopting EVs to buy a Lucid. They want to get those those folks to dump out. Now, I don't know if it's so smart to do it at an Electrify America charge station because most of those cars that are coming in are either already Lucids or much cheaper. I mean, this excluded. But if you're driving like a Nissan Leaf or the, the Volkswagen ID4 or something, like chances are you can't afford a Lucid. I'm not saying that in like a pejorative, nasty way. I'm just saying like the Lucids are really expensive. And if you've opted for like, you know, a Leaf, it, it was likely not because you love Nissan. It was likely because it was the affordable choice that gets the job done as an EV. So I, th I think I've heard of them out in the world being at Tesla stations being like, hey, come drive a Lucid. They were going to let me drive it. And I was like, well, at the risk of like being kidnapped by a couple of dudes in a Lucid who were posing as Lucid salespeople or marketing people. I don't know. I think the reality is that people are buying EVs. We're getting variety. And if anything, this Hummer shows that we get variety in EVs today. So don't come like you know, crying to me saying, oh, everything's a Tesla. No, everything is not a Tesla. You can buy this crazy 9,000 pound pickup truck with a thousand horsepower. You can do that and charge it at your house. So that's gonna do it for my road trip, I think, I, unless anything terribly wrong happens. But um, I, I genuinely have had an entertaining time driving it. It's very much a truck, but it's easy to drive. It is certainly not an H1 if you were fearing that this would drive anything like that. No, it's great. It's supple. The air suspension is absorbing everything. And uh, yeah, I just genuinely have had a good time. And everybody, everybody, literally everybody who has seen it has either smiled or asked questions or wanted to know more and it's a cool thing to talk about i like it my only complaint ooh, ooh, ooh. my only complaint is the seats this thing this plastic thing right here after a while that does start to hit your back and you do notice it on your shoulder blades so that's it's a little annoying just make that soft don't no hard surfaces on the seats please thank you thank you so much for watching liking commenting and subscribing don't forget to respect the drive. And we'll do one more auto lane change. Come on, you can do it. There you go. And I'll see you in the next one.